So I'll present um, an NGO I co-founded uh, for Coralay. Yeah. Okay, so this didn't work with me yet. Okay. So what I'll do is just tell you what Coralay is, what we do, talk about some of the challenges we uh, encounter in trying to do data for good, and then, as, as Wolfgang mentioned, um, tell you about what we're going to do a little bit about you. So oh, correlate. Our mission that way, is we're trying to support organizations that have social missions and nonprofits or classical NGOs in their work by the means of data analysis. So that's where the name comes from. We try to aid people by correlating variables. Correlate, some people think we're helping people with coral draw. That's not what we're doing. Um, how we do this is uh, going to talk more about that more concretely in the next slides is by connecting young motivated data analysts, so basically everybody in the room, um, offer them a platform to apply their skills for a social good, and so that means also um, learn new skills. And kind of like the meta uh, goal of the organization is through our work also kind of raise awareness within the non-profit sector for uh, the merits of data and data analysis. Like in Germany, most of the times if you talk about data, uh, people talk about their personal data that their bank or Facebook or other companies collect about them. And we kind of want to show uh, a different perspective also on the benefits and what else data is. Um, so, kind of, who are we? We're a very decentralized organization. I say it's not like a meetup. We've got an organizing team around uh, around a dozen people. Uh, our founders currently in Oxford, uh, I'm in Berlin slash Mainz. We've got people in the Ruhrbeet, we've got people in Hamburg, Constance, all over the place. That's kind of the organizing team, and we've got a network of 400 people, um, students at the social sciences, or computer sciences, professionals working in, in fields related to data. And we also have some local organizations that we just started up in Constance and uh, also in the moment, uh, which is uh, my hometown. And kind of as an organization, we are a classical registered charity in Germany, so we are regular and you're talking fine. Um, you'll get a short version, uh, or a like, narrative version of uh, this here. This is an article that the global edition of the Handelsblatt recently um, ran about us. I know like, the full link here is not very helpful to you now, but just Google uh, when big data meets altruism to kind of get that article in a bit more. See some more examples more than now with here. So what we do all thought I'll just start with one of our projects, talk about what we've done there. Um, and I want to talk about a project we did for the um, an umbrella organization for all debating societies at German speaking universities. Um, there's a pretty big organization, like most German universities have a debating society, and this umbrella organization um, organizes tournaments. A German tournament uh, also once hosted the World Championships. And um, what we've done for them is conduct a member survey of both current members and alumni of the organization so that they would know what the needs of their community are in terms of developing the organization and have some data that shows their sponsors, kind of like how people say debating helped them gain relevant skills uh, that are useful to employers sponsoring. Uh, organizations or sponsors of, for instance, McKinsey, I uh, think larger telecom uh, site, so big sponsors. And what we've done is we basically carried out a, a full scale survey project like we contracted from uh, uh, any other marketing company. We've done uh, development and pre testing of a questionnaire. Um, we've rolled this out online and then analyzed uh, that data and had a Big uh, report on the results, which I think in their community they're still discussing. So, uh, in terms of data visualization, often when you're working with NGOs, you're not doing anything very fancy. Most of them just don't have no looking bar charts and so on. This is just one example from the report um, what people say, how long they've been involved in debating. Um, here's just some breakdown of what the age of people is. Um, or um, uh, that's particularly relevant to this organization, the, um, the background, 
um, of these people, some whether the parents study, because it's kind of a bit of an elite affair doing university debating. So they're hoping to change that. And so first step to doing this, like we need knowing what's the background of people, how many people that are actually kind of role models not coming from uh, university households do they have. So that's kind of like in terms of topic, one, one project that we did. Next thing I want to talk about is like how does this work from uh, beginning to end. Um, and this kind of like a workflow, I apologize for being German, I'll translate everything. Um, basically that's like the toughest part for me being part of the organizing team is like meeting the NGO, talking with them, uh, Skyping, emailing, kind of like figure out what kind of challenges they face and whether the means that we provide, like data collection and analysis, is something that's useful for them to uh, solve their challenges. Um, so we try to like write down a very concrete project proposal, what, what's the product that they want to have at the end. Um, and then we put out a call for applications through our network, email going to everybody on the list, where we tell them, look, that's the organization, that's the problem that they're facing, that's what we want to do in the case I just talked about. We want to develop, run a survey, and then analyze the data. Do you think you have the skills for that and the time to help out? And then we, we receive people's, um, people's responses whether they're interested and uh, select a team that will work on the project over usually a time frame from around one month to four months. They come together with the organization that's sponsored by the organization, a meeting at the organization's office or some other place, so they meet each other because our teams are not in one place, but just as our organizing team, like in different places in Germany, so we'll have one meeting for the team with the organization to get the whole thing started, and then it's all like working online, kind of like just a couple of people freelancers, that's kind of like how they're working. Um, we also do, because uh, we're all uh, in the organizing team at least, we're all in, in one way or another. I'm employed at the university, others are studying at the university, some doing a PhD, some doing masters. So also doing like a, a fully alleged uh, peer review process where we send out another email to the network, <coughs> ask people whether they would anonymously review um, the draft project report, and then the team receives those reviews. They will work, uh, they report, and then it goes to the client. We'll have a report at the end, ideally also some event with the organization. That's, that's basically um, what we'll do. What we hope to achieve with us is obviously have some benefit for the organizations we're working with, that the insights we generate are in a way helpful for them to steer their work, to improve the work they're doing. Um, we also have a strong focus on like providing benefit for network members, for the people who work on the projects. Um, but those people are mostly students, because students are the people in network with the most time at their hands. You guys, I guess most of you, are in some kind of employment, you know that your time is scarce, spending like five to 10 hours a week on such a nonprofit project is hard. So uh, most of our project members are students, and parts, I guess, the most important goal there is to show students that the data analysis skills that they learn in, uh, in their courses, maybe psychology, computer science, or sociology, political science, that these are also useful outside the scientific realm of their subject of study, and kind of encourage them to take further courses in a subject and consider data analysis as a viable career path for them. Along with the usual things like if you do project work in a team, you'll learn teamwork, you'll learn all these other soft skills covered at fine points. Uh, I just heard both things. Not a programmer, but just one short slide on kind of like the software we're using. Uh, most of it should be familiar. But we're using for analysis and visualization, we're just using the standard combination of RMS Studio uh, because it's so versatile and very important for students. It's swinging, we don't run into any kind of like legal issues using uh, education licenses or other software for such a project. Um, we're using Team Drive to sync data across computers for people. It's a solution hosted in Germany. 
that's very important in terms of data security if we're working with uh, survey data. Um, initially, we wanted to use um, GitHub, but that turned out that's a bit like too steep a learning curve uh, within these student teams. And Slack should be familiar, and that's what we use to communicate within the teams, but also the organizing um, team. These are other organizations that we've worked with. Only one to briefly mention what we did. This year, this is like a very German hard deck uh, Boy Scouts organization, actually it's Boys and Girl Scouts. And they, they ran a members survey, which has been lying around uh, for a couple of years. Like they, they ran this nice survey with pen and paper on buses to their summer camp. They even like programmed some uh, interface to feed the data into my SQL database, and then no one was there to analyze the data, so that's what we did. Um, then we ran a workshop with Street Football World, and they're kind of an umbrella organization linking together um, football projects on the ground in different parts of the world, so for instance, like a football project in Medellin, Colombia, um, and trying to get funding in from them, from FIFA, from all the big football sponsors. And we had three workshops in Berlin with people from the data science community there to get into an exchange and what kind of the challenges and needs of an NGO are, how the NGO currently works, and what kind of solutions um, data scientists talk about in their day-to-day -day work, and whether anything of that is applicable to um, them. Project Photoshoka is one of the biggest social entrepreneurship founders, and we've analyzed applicant data for one of their projects, looking at what the predictors for successful application are. And it's one thing, so kind of looking at whether there are any implicit biases in who they select for funding, and secondly, also making some improvement to the form they are using, so that in the future, it's also about empowering the NGOs they could run these analysis themselves without our help. Uh, just a, an example, before we done the project with them, everything in their form was like a free text field and even like organization size was you could put in with whatever. So with that output, it's hard for the organization to do the analysis themselves. One big student uh, is a cool project. They're connecting um, pupils and students so that pupils can follow students. Uh, in a regular university week to see whether that's something for them studying that subject or that area. We connected them with one person from our network to help them get some visualizations, some statistics for seed funding applications. Um, Straight to heaven is a pretty cool project, so if any of you guys are involved in the NGO, this is backed by some of the major IT companies and they provide IT for free to NGOs. And we got the data from their um, from their e-commerce site to analyze like what the demand for, for the different products are. Uh, European Youth Parliament is a full project uh, simulating a session of the European Parliament, and they've also run a survey of people participating in the program. So we've looked at um, how the participants match up towards a pool, a representative pool of young people, whether the, what are the selection mechanisms there, which people are missing out on their program. And lastly, Clusterpass, they're doing first aid courses for kids, and that was just connecting them with an analyst to do some Google AdWords data analysis. Well, that's the project so far. I hope to add more logos to this slide uh, during the next months. Let's look at my interface here. Okay, so <coughs> before I mention what we'll do at the data bar, we just want to briefly um, mention a couple of challenges we're facing, not really providing any solutions to the challenges but seeing that maybe there are any ideas here in the room in how to tackle that and maybe these challenges sound familiar to you. Um, the problem is not like finding a good solution for the problem the NGOs are facing, the problem is uh, finding the problem in the first hand. Like, particularly um, with a group of organizations where most of the people come from a humanities uh, background or social science background without lots of quantitative background. So I think it's a bit different to like uh, working with companies where at least in development departments will have some people with that education. Um, so it's tough kind of like with them together figuring out firstly what kind of data do you actually have? Do some people only need spreadsheets that they have or data? 
as you guys know in this room, also text as data, um, lots of other things are data. So that's really challenging and um, taking up lots of our work we do miss in our free time. And so we're kind of limited in how many projects we can do, not in terms of the volunteers willing to put in time to work on a project, but like really spending the time in the organizing team of talking with the NGOs to define a project. And I mean, with, with data analysis, you say 80% data analysis, kind of data collection, cleaning, and so on, and then only 20% of your time is spent on actual statistical analysis. It seems a bit similar in terms of doing data for good that 80% is communication beforehand, communication of the results afterward, and then 20% is the actual data analysis. And uh, communication is important to not overburden um, people you're talking with. So Jake Borway uh, founded of Data Client, which is a similar organization in the US, which was kind of the role model for our organization, said, don't say the term p-value to anyone unless they say to you first. So don't start like with the technical terms uh, with NGO people, they themselves show you that they know uh, roughly what they're talking about. That's tough for social science. Okay, so lastly, the data barbecue. You've seen that it's in a cool villa, and there seems to be some pool nearby. I don't know if access to that one. Uh, but anyway, we've got lots of things you can dive into. What we'll bring to the data uh, barbecue is a complete MySQL demo from the petition website, openpetition.de. So that includes thousands of petitions, petition texts, uh, info on whether they send out email reminders or something, when these petitions were posted, what area they're going to, whether they have contact with politicians, and a complete anonymized list of the signatures. So I think we've got 11 million, 11 million signatures around there. Um, this is just one example visualization we've used this data before that I've quickly done, which is basically just the times of the day that people sign petitions. So you can do all kinds of things with this data. You can, like, if you do text analysis, take the petition texts and kind of try to extract the characteristics of the petitions which make a successful petition. If you do time series or event history analysis, you can look at kind of like what's the ideal time frame for a petition, when you can you stop signature collection. If you do machine learning, since we have anonymized email addresses, you can look into whether there are any bots like doing a petition signatures. And there are lots of different applications there. Um, and we'll bring that data. Uh, it's neatly formatted. I'll provide an introduction to the data, and then we'll see what we can do with this. Generally, this data will be open access. It's a Creative Commons license. So the idea here is if you start with something during the data barbecue, this is actually something you can continue to work with and the organization Open Petition Day is very interested in like seeing your results so you can contact them if you want to contact them through us.